So the <coughs> name of our subject is the spirituality of priesthood. Spirituality of priesthood. That is the subject that we are going to deal with. So when we look into the society, we see different religions, some religions with a structured nature and some without any particular structure. But in every religion we can see a person who is called as a priest, who leads the people in their worship, who offers sacrifices, who speaks to the people in the name of God, who conveys the message of God to the faithful. So in every religion, in every society, we see different religions and in every religion we see a person called priest. In the tribal religion, sometimes we call him shaman. He is a healer, he is a priest, sometimes he himself is the leader of that particular tribe. So there is a historical background when we speak about priesthood from different religions. We can see a lot of influences. Uh, in the about the priesthood so when we come into the priesthood of Christ or when we speak about a Christian priesthood the source of Christian priesthood is Jesus Christ in the New Testament the priesthood takes its birth together with the institution of the Holy Eucharist. In the New Testament, we see that the Christian priesthood takes its birth together with the Holy Eucharist at the Last Supper. <coughs> So, when we go through the narrations in the Gospels or in the Synoptic Gospels or in the Gospel of St. John, at the Last Supper, Jesus washes the feet of his apostles and tells them, I have come not to, not to be served but to serve. So, that is the core of Christian priesthood. And after instituting the Holy Eucharist, there emerges automatically the Christian priesthood where Christ demands a continuation of his mission through this priest. Okay. What is the purpose of Eucharist when we think within the context of priesthood? The purpose of Eucharist is to nourish the believers in their journey to the kingdom of God. Eucharist is a nourishment given to the believers in their journey to the kingdom of God. So the duty of a priest, the first and foremost duty of a priest is to nourish the faithful with the Eucharist or the body and blood of Christ. The first and foremost duty of a priest is to nourish the faithful with the Eucharist or the body and blood of Christ in their journey to the kingdom of God. But when we look into the history before Vatican II we can say priest was a taken for granted position in the church. He was in a way you can call the priest as an authority. He is the last word in the parish. So nobody is questioning him, nobody questions his authority, nobody challenges him. So he was almost like a king in the parish or in the society.
but recent studies have challenged the position of a priest in the church recent studies means after the vatican ii the concept of priesthood has made a drastic change in its understanding after the vatican ii the concept about priesthood has made a drastic change in its understanding in the earlier days the position of a priest was more secure and his role was highly valued in the earlier days that means before vatican ii the position of a priest was more secured so he is uh, that the life itself has got a security in itself and people also revered them or respected them and valued them and the vocation of priesthood is considered something higher than even the vocation to a family life or vocation to marriage so in the uh, before the vatican ii the position of a priest was very much secured in the society or it was valued by the people but after vatican ii there emerged lot of questions about what is expected of a priest after the vatican renewal or reformation there emerged lot of questions what is expected of a priest the nature of priesthood became more challenging in the present situation or in the present society it became more challenging <coughs> it calls the priest to be servant leaders it is a new concept after the vatican ii it calls the priest to be servant leaders as servant leaders they have to guide as servant leaders they have to guide direct guide direct and lead the people so what we see is uh, in the earlier days the position of a priest is very much valued in the society till vatican ii and nobody is challenging his position he is considered as a authority or a boss we can say but after the vatican ii there came up a uh, change in the understanding of priesthood it became more challenging and the vatican ii renewal calls the priest to be servant leaders a new concept of new understanding about the priesthood of christ and as servant leaders they have to guide direct and lead the people in their journey to the kingdom of god clear now okay then the situation is totally different from the earlier days the fact is there are some factors that affect the life of priest in the present scenario or in the present situation after the vatican ii there are some factors that affect the life of the priest maybe negatively or positively some of the ne negative factors that affect the life of a priest one the shortage of vocations the shortage of vocations <coughs> that means we don't have sufficient vocations today especially after the vatican ii when the world is moving into a secularized situation the number of people or the number of youngsters those who choose the life of a priest is very less when we compare it to the earlier days or olden times okay then because of this lack of vocation there comes over work to those priests those who are in the church
which leads to failure in their spiritual life we can understand when there is less people lot of burden is put on the others those who are working or those who are in the church as priest and automatically they have to run from one place to another and this will lead to a kind of spiritual emptiness or a spiritual lack of spiritual preparation from their part sometimes we will be in charge of a school and some other institutions then we will have two or three parishes under us then different villages so we have to look after all these things and we will not have time for ourselves slowly we start to skip our prayers meditations all these things we will be just a kind of manager so that is one of the negative effect that happen uh, comes into the life of priest then second one lack of understanding about priesthood lack of understanding about priesthood some come and join the seminary thinking that this is a very as we told in the beginning it is a very secure life everything is ready for you you are no you need not be worried about how to make your daily bread so some come uh, just to enjoy the life so they they don't have a proper understanding about the priesthood so that also affect the life of priest then sexual scandals so we know many incidents in and around us the next effect is a secularized society around a secularized society when we speak about the secularized society we can understand when we compare these present uh, days to the earlier days the number of people those who are believers is much less most of them have turned to become atheist or they don't believe in any religion so they, that is a different way of life for them then the values have changed even the concept about marriage just changed so this also affect the life of a priest when he speaks about his own identity what a, what identity i have in a secularized society for what i am witnessing so that that is a struggle within the life of a priest especially in the present situation okay so sexual scandals then secularized society the next last one is change of values change of values values uh, uh, understanding about suffering love of god love of neighbor forgiveness marriage family life all these things for uh, for examples we can say earlier there we were very strict there was a very strict family life in the christian families but now it has changed into a different idea where some of the people promote living together and all those kinds of changes now the society sees it as a uh, see it as nothing wrong but the church speaks about it as a something wrong so there is always a collision between the society and the church especially in the uh, field of values when we speak okay so that uh, these all things affect the life of a priest so we are in the world holding to a different value system where the world no more accept it or no more able to ready to receive it and we still we have to hold on to it that is a great struggle in our life when we speak about the spirituality and identity of priesthood clear no yes then it is no more an authoritarian leadership now 
priesthood is no more an authoritarian leadership he is called to be a servant leader is no more an authoritarian leadership or no more a boss but he is called to be a servant leader the new understanding about priesthood insists on the teaching of christ the new understanding about priesthood insists on the teaching of jesus christ who says i have come to serve and not to be served so therefore in this present situation there arises three questions about the life of a priest three questions that arise what is the function of a priest what is the function of a priest how can he give witness to the world how can he give witness to the world and the last what is the identity of a priest what is the identity of a priest the identity of a priest in the present society what is the identity of a priest in the present society in order to understand the priesthood we should have a deeper understanding and knowledge about the core of priesthood in order to understand the depth of priesthood we should have a knowledge and deeper understanding about the core of priesthood the core of priesthood is eucharist the core of priesthood is eucharist the source and life of priesthood is eucharist the source and life of priesthood is eucharist and without eucharist there is no priesthood the fathers of the church very often they speak you are ordained to be a priest in order to offer the sacrifice and celebrate the sacraments for the faithful so most of the uh, church fathers or father in their writings very often they mention when they speak about priesthood very often they say you are ordained to be a priest in order to offer sacrifice and uh, perform the uh, sacraments for the faithful so the source and center of our life as a priest is the eucharist and if there is no eucharist then there is no priesthood eucharist is a total self giving of jesus eucharist is the total self giving of jesus to the whole world and to the humanity eucharist is the total self giving of jesus to the whole world and to the humanity so now we are speaking about the core of priesthood that is eucharist and now we explain or we try to explain what is eucharist eucharist is the total self giving of jesus to the whole world and to the humanity eucharist is the source and summit of priestly life okay eucharist is the source and summit of 
ക്രിസ്ത്യൻ ലൈഫ് ആൻഡ് മിഷൻ എവറി ക്രിസ്ത്യൻ മിഷൻ എവറി ക്രിസ്ത്യൻ ലൈഫ് ഈസ് സെൻറ്റേഡ് അറൗണ്ട് ദിസ് യു ക്രിസ്റ്റ് ഓർ ദ ബോഡി ആൻഡ് ബ്ലഡ് ഓഫ് ക്രൈസ്റ്റ് സോ എവറി മിഷൻ എവറി ക്രിസ്ത്യൻ മിഷൻ and every christian life is centered around this eucharist again the eucharist is the source and summit of all gospel preaching eucharist is the source and summit of all gospel preaching gospel preaching can be in different ways it is not necessary that you go and give the uh, homily or preach a retreat it can be a teacher that is also a different way of preaching the gospel you can take care of the sick or you can do some social activities then you can look after a parish so every action from the part of a priest for the good of the society is a preaching of the gospel or proclamation of the gospel which is centered on eucharist which is a total self giving of jesus so when we preach the gospel in different ways we are giving ourselves to the society we are giving jesus to the society uh, who is our model christ who gave himself totally for the world okay then thus eucharist plays a vital role in the life of every christian eucharist plays a vital role in the life of every christian especially in the day to day mission of a priest especially eucharist plays a vital role in the life of every christian and especially in the day to day mission of a priest therefore we can say priests are called and set apart specially by god for a particular mission priests are called and set apart specially by god for a particular mission clear no for this reason the lifestyle that is demanded of them means the priest the lifestyle that is demanded of them will be the same life of jesus or christ so the lifestyle that is demanded of a priest or those who become priests is the same life that is of jesus christ so we cannot say i am a priest so i i am the all authority here if you look into the life of jesus it is totally different okay for this reason the lifestyle demanded of a priest is the life that of jesus thus we can say the source of the spiritual life of a priest is always the eucharist therefore the source of our life as a priest the source of our life as a priest is always the eucharist do you get the connection we say that the life demanded of a priest is the life of jesus and next sentence is we say that the source of our spiritual life is eucharist because this eucharist is jesus christ and the lifestyle of jesus christ is total self giving that is why this eucharist is a total self giving of jesus and as a priest we are demanded of his life that is of jesus and the life of jesus is total self giving our spirituality as a priest also should be centered on this eucharist which is a kind of total self giving of ourselves to the church and to the people of god am i clear okay then we go ahead thus we can say 
the source of the spiritual life of a priest is Eucharist. The Eucharist and priesthood are the important factors of Christian life. The Eucharist and the priesthood are the important factors of Christian life. Okay, then it is the Eucharist which gathers and unites the faithful. It is the Eucharist that gathers and unites the faithful. Thus, all other sacraments, every ministry of the church, thus all other sacraments, every ministry of the church, every apostolate or mis apostolate or missions, emerges from the Eucharist. All other sacraments, all the apostolates, all the ministries of the church emerges or finds its source from the Eucharist and directs towards the Eucharist. In a simple way we can say it is from the Eucharist and for the Eucharist. So every action of the church is finds its source from the Eucharist. Eucharist means Christ and for the Eucharist. Clear?